Hey guys, JH, welcome back to the practice tea and I can't take a trick. I've been down here like six days in a row and when I leave home the weather's great. Well, okay, when I come down here the clouds come in and it starts to rain. Just I thought all the adverse things <laughs> that were going to happen to me happened last year, but it seems like there's a... Anyway, it's hardly adverse, but it's just so annoying. Okay, guys, guys, you might think this is funny, but I pulled a stomach muscle in the, in the gym uh, yesterday, and I've just got my weight belt on to just give me a little bit of support. Um, <laughs> quite painful. Uh, and at my age, <laughs> the stomach muscles nowhere near as as uh, resilient as they used to be. Okay, carrying on with some channel lock stuff. But again, guys, even if you're a conventional golf swinger, this could actually be used in a conventional golf swing. Channel lock, of course, is back foot into out golf swing. But even if you had a conventional golf swing, and I, and I will highlight that on this, on this video as well. Now guys, what we were talking about on the last video was the auto load. And the auto load is this, going from this to that, which is the automatic response loading in the golf swing. Lag loading, if uh, for want of better word, or better terminology. But in conjunction with that, and with channel lock guys you can be a little bit become a little bit defensive because the ball is so far back in the stands and you tend to you know, and I've seen it manifest itself with a few people and it did with me when I started initially with channel lock in that you become really inhibited with your your through swing because you're concerned about not being able being too far in front of the ball when you hit it well invariably the through swing is an afterthought or, or an after action. It may be a, uh, a a present thought that you want to completely release the body towards the target in the downswing, but that won't happen in a reasonable golf swing until you've got impact or, or roundabout impact. So what I'm suggesting, guys, is that in conjunction with our auto load that and, and our intention to hit into out in conjunction with that I want you to add or incorporate a very very specific body componentry thought and action and that is I want you to feel like you're trying to hit the flag or the target with your belly button your navel after you've completed the swing. I want you to feel that that belly button is is trying to hit that post out there or that flag. Essentially this guys. We're going to lag load it. Yeah. Now if I can do that at 80 years old, you guys uh, have younger Vintage should be able to do it. <laughs> if you've got any lower back problems or knee problems, please don't try. But invariably, it's only the thought process that gets you to do that. Most people are physically capable of doing that. <laughs> no question. And for me, when I do that, it's a club. A club and a half difference in distance. With the driver, it's 20 yards. Genuine 20 yards. Everybody says, I hit the ball 20 or 30 yards longer. If you can hit the ball 5 yards longer, 10 yards longer, you're doing well. But when you can hit it 20 yards longer, that's a big leap. And I can do that with the driver when I when I swing like that. Now, I haven't had any hits today, guys, because I wanted to get on and do it quickly. Now, the other thing, though, in conjunction with this, and you can do this with a conventional golf swing, but with channel lock, it helps a lot. It helps us get in that channel early on the backswing. And what is this, what is this process? Guys, with the lead arm, if you externally, ro oh, sorry, internally rotate your shoulder joint and the humerus, 
at address like that and put pressure on that at address just as if you were going to auger your lead arm into the ground. What that does clearly is it, it pokes this lead shoulder out and starts the turn gets it into the backswing. Now we are semi into the backswing anyway because of the, the the back foot ball position. Conventional golf swing we're up here look at our shoulders they're square. As I move the ball back the shoulders start to close. Back a little bit further they're more closed. Off the back foot they're significantly closed. But if we can actually internally rotate that humerus and that lead shoulder joint here that will actually give you great stability in that lead arm and that lead shoulder and it will actually get you in that channel really quickly on the backswing. Now conventional teaching says that we should never go here in the backswing and I think that's only because people have never gone there in the backswing. <laughs> it's just it's just a traditional dogma. There's no people say oh you're too far inside you get stuck Well, ask Hogan that. <laughs> ask Hogan why he did that. Hogan was here. He wanted to get stuck in terms of applying that terminology. So, the, the three things, or the two things, we're going to, or three things, we're going to, we're going to auto-load it, and you can auto-load from conventional golf swing. Guys, conventional golf swing. Forward ball position here, auto load and tummy facing the it's, this is not just a channel for for channel lock uh, channel lock is you know, it's just a development that I've of a golf swing that I've come up with but you know 99.99% .9, of golfers play conventionally and they play the ball from there so if you're playing a conventional golf swing which is hard for me to do these days but and we're going to auto load it here See this, this belly button is actually left of that target. It's actually left of that target. And we've got, you know, as normal on the JH practice tee, we've got 45 k's of <laughs> cross head wind and so the ball wants to be, but there's some posts out here, some Australian rules football posts and I'm aiming at the two on the right hand side and that went straight between them. Got a six iron here guys. Okay, now I'll just show you again with the internal rotation and the auto load and getting the the um, the, the belly button towards the target. Now you'll know when you've rotated a lot through the golf ball with your shoulders and your, your midriff because the club will finish pointing this way. If you chop off your rotation through the golf ball, it'll finish here. That's why Hogan's club finished over there. Because he was here. His right shoulder was so far through the, through the, uh, the impact zone. All right, guys, they're, they're just dead cold shots, but they're just, and in terms of contact, they're 85%, they're 95% contact. Okay, it'll look a bit ungainly, but that tells you it's not ungainly. It might feel ungainly, but mechanically and technically, it's not because you can't get that ball flight if the swing is ungainly or ungainly incorrect. There are a lot of ungainly looking golf swings hit the ball beautifully. Jim Furyk. Okay, so here we are. So we're going to and I'll load, internally rotate that lead shot, and you can do that for a conventional golf swing as well as channel lock, because even in a conventional golf swing, I never go side to side. I never go there. I'm always turning early and getting the club inside, even with a conventional golf swing. I've always done that. I'm not one to extend backwards and forwards. I've just never done that. It's never felt comfortable to me. Okay. 
So, so that was the conventional. Okay, this is channel lock, and we're lining up here, here. Internal rotation, auto load. And there it is, guys. Even out of <laughs> three inch long grass, that's uh, that's muddy and boggy. Come on, change. Wind is so strong, guys. See this, guys? The auto load does this. It gets this configuration. Normal backswing is there, but auto load gets you in this position. It's as if you were a left-hander. Now I haven't got as much auto load on the golf club anywhere near as much as I want. I actually want that, but because I've hit you know probably seven million golf balls over the years, and we worked that out. Um, I think the most I ever hit in one day was 1,600. That's when I owned my own golf range. Started at 7 o'clock in the morning, I was still hitting golf balls at 7.30 at night. And was still hitting the ball good at the, at the, end, at the night. Okay. So here we go, channel one. Auto load. Yeah, internal rotation. See guys, the club finishes here, which means I've got that trail shoulder way through the shot. Way through the shot. Now what I could add to that is just seeing the ball hit with the five o'clock nose. That being I want to be here when I hit it. Because I'm really sore in the stomach, I'm just tending to just let my head move forward a little bit to take a bit of the pressure off because when the when I've got my five o'clock nose in place here, it puts a bit of pressure on the on the stomach. Okay, here we go. Now I haven't been through there for a long time, guys, myself. And it's hard for me now doing that because I've it requires an entirely different <clears throat> timing phase feeling I get back there and I think well, what do I do but I'm just thinking my one thought is to just concentrate on getting my belly button pointing at that uh, at that goal post out there see if I can get a real lot of auto load See how close my shoulders are, guys? <laughs> 45 degrees. I'm already into the turn. That was the genius of Mo Norman. When Mo Norman started the club back here, he was already into the turn. A lot of people that have tried the Mo Norman swing just put the club back there and keep their shoulders here. He didn't do that. He turned the club back there. And that's what he told me on the first day. Because I asked him about it. I said, so when did you pick that up and why do you do it? He said, because it just gets me into my turn, and it showed me. He said, I don't just place it back there. He said, I turn it back there. <clears throat> Down the line, guys, look. If I'm back here, and I internally rotate, look at my shoulders. 45 degrees, which is, as a feeling, where I want to be in channel lock when I hit it. I won't be. I'll be about 8 or 10 degrees, and I'll have about 4 degrees or 5 degrees closure on the club face, which will give me the little push draw. And they're numbers that you'll work out for yourself by your ball flight. If it's going too far for a right-hander to the right, haven't got enough closure on the golf club, and you've got too much into out. So you've just got to work that out, guys, because we've all got different physicalities. Okay. Internal rotation. Auto load.
just frozen rope guys and it's dead into the wind that's where you want the club to finish there pointing there that means you've got your right shoulder through or for right hander trail shoulder through the shot now it's not going to come easy guys it's hard for me because I'm only doing it today I've only thought about it to just something we can do but I saw it in it when uh, Kyle Berkshire won that long drive competition a couple of days ago because in like I think he's up to almost 160 mile an hour club head speed. He's averaging about 154 and a ball speed of about 223 to 225 and carrying it like 400 yards. But what he does, guys, because Kyle does this to get going, it's, and then when he hits it, he goes, he's facing here. This is what he looks like when he's finished, he's here. That's how athletic he is and how much he releases. I wouldn't suggest trying that at our level of physicality. He's quite an athlete, clearly. But he, 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 he fires the club so hard that he has to finish here. As do all those long drive guys. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can really hit a absolute boomer. I tried to get that tried to get that rotation through the ball too early in my thinking and I went a bit early and then I had to readjust which is what killed my balance I had to, I was readjusting when I hit it but it still went it just you know, pushed probably two yards more chase. Big, big, big auto load. That's the way I want to hit it. And that's where I want to finish. Okay, guys, it's a work in progress for me as well. But we can start together. Okay. Now, another thing, this will probably be a long video today. Uh, I just needed to get out in the fresh air for a fair while. But guys, what, what is so important in a golf swing, and, and if you look at Bayou Golf right now, Matt Gray is doing a, is some stuff on there in conjunction with Steve Walters on Channel Lock. <clears throat> and he's hitting it like a dart. As I say, he's, he's a guy that when he took on Channel Lock, he was a scratch handicap player, and now he's plus five. <laughs> I, th I think that's quite a testimonial and indictment of... Uh, of the capability of the channel like golf swing but what Matt does and what I've always advocated and, and Mo Norman and Count Yogi did it better than anybody else in that they were millisecond the same in their process of addressing the ball and dispatching the golf club in the backswing and I call that consistent rate of execution and it starts here, like like with Count Yogi, Yogi would be here. He would go through his process. He'd be here, look out there for for the for, for a specific amount of time, but then come in, put the ball down here, and then go. And I've timed you know hundreds of those swings, and they're millisecond the same, millisecond the same. Mo Norman was millisecond the same. Now, if you can do that with any golf swing you've got, and you, and your process can be precisely the same timing phasing you're going to be consistent you know why guys because if you do that if you've got a process and you go through that going through that and getting back here getting in there and then getting in your ignition move for the golf you don't have any time to change your mind you've got to do that after you've 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 had a, a, a mental objective 
programming take place. You know what, where you want the ball to go and you know how you want to swing. So that's all done. So all you're doing then is coming in, setting up for the shot and, and even conventional golf swing. If you take, if you took your grip, put the club down here, got into position, And you did it exactly the same every time. Now it doesn't have to be at the speed I do it, but if it was the same speed every time and the same process every time, that's what it needs to be. Because that will breed consistency of neural messaging to the body. The body will be ready for that program, for that timing in the golf swing. But if you get in there and, and, and do what I call swing us interrupt us, and there's something else very similar to that. If, if you have a swing us interrupt us, which is okay, I'm coming in here, setting up, getting in here, come in here. Now I should have already gone, but I'm over here now and I've something else has come in and I'm doing something else. Now that is the swing us interrupt us. There's no need to be doing that. And even if you come in, you may not come in and do it as quick as I do, but if you come in, put the club down, and it's like two little steps like that, like Trevino. Trevino, was, Trevino would come in and was go, one, two, three, and then he'd go. The third was pull the right foot back, and then he went. But it was exactly the same, it was a millisecond the same every time. And even the guys that, are, that take a long time on the tour, a painfully long time, to structure that setup and the, and the ignition move in the backswing, even though it's long, it's long exactly the same. It's long exactly the same. There were guys in the past like Doug Sanders uh, that had the, you know, the the 25 uh, waggles and whatever. And Sergio Garcia went through that period where he actually had, you know, 36 regrips once before he took the club back. With Sergio, one, two. He got to 36. He got out of it, but his average was about 20. But sometimes it could be 18, sometimes it could be 25. So no matter what your timing is, all I'm saying is make sure it's exactly the same timing every time. Every time. Now I've always been, I think, pretty close to the same timing. Okay, I'm, I'm do, trying to do something a little differently right now with the auto load and getting the, the belly button through to the target. So I've got a little bit going on in my in my neural circuits at the moment. So there's a little bit of a little bit of static there which is I'm trying to to eliminate the static and make the process automatic. So here what I normally do on the golf course guys, my process is my club is in the bag or if it's on the buggy I look at the shot, walk at it, then I pick the club, I, I place it in my lead hand, I usually then take this grip here, like that, then I move into the shot, here, and that's about my timing, that's about my phasing normally. Any more than that, and I get swing us interrupt us. I really do. This grass is so long, guys. And the ground is so wet. We had rain last night, we had rain this morning. Come on. But this is good hitting. I'll get. Uh, I'll get a four iron guys and hit some four iron out of rough. It's got less less sole on it. And so it'll and, and a little bit different bounce so it gets through the grass a little bit better. Okay. Auto load um, internal rotation of the lead shoulder here. And what does that feel like? It just feels like that. It just feels like you're, you're turning a tap 
like that, but we want to hold the pressure on that tap. Okay. Can't hit a bit in there. And guys, I've always had as an objective when I practice is I always aim at a target. Every single shot I aim at a target. And I even, when I'm practicing seriously, I've always got a specific type of shot that I want to hit. Because that's what we do when we play golf. No point in coming in and just saying I'm going to play the same shot all the time, the same feel. It's not. And here, to get the ball to that post with that crosshead wind, I've got to hit a little what I call a little banking draw. It's got to be a little banker back into that wind and that's what I'm hitting. I've only hit one that didn't pick up the bank draw and just actually just pushed a little bit but just ended up right of the of the post. All right last one come in here That's as good as I can hit the golf ball. That's as good as I can hit it. And see how I actually fell off the ball after I'd hit it? You know why? Because I got my right shoulder so far through that the left shoulder came back here and the momentum wanted to go that way. Which took me back there. And I'm trying to think of the player that used to swing like that. Used to hit it and then he'd be like this. Korean or um, Singapore player, Singaporese or Chinese or someone, but that's how he used to swing. He used to nut it. I saw him in America. <laughs> he just absolutely flushed it. And he looked like a revolving door that had a broken spring. It was just, but the ball was like that. And he was long and he was about this high. trying to think. He was a very famous player at the time. Okay, last shot. Come on, Josh. That's where the club needs to be, guys. Because you know you've turned your shoulders far enough through. If the light is any good, uh, I'll do a couple down range. It's very hard to pick the ball up when there's cloud. Um, but I'll have a look. But if not, I'm going to come back in the next couple of days when the weather clears up and we've got a lot more to do. I'm back back on the horse, so to speak, and hopefully it'll be... There'll be videos for everybody, all types of stuff in the golf swing. Won't just be Channel Lock. I'm just doing some revision on Channel Lock for Steve Walters and Matty Gray, because Matty Gray's having such a huge success with the guys. I mean, to take something up, well, being a good player is a big commitment anyway, when you're a scratch player, because, you, know, <laughs> you know, I can imagine the, the fragility of thinking, saying, wow, I'm a scratch player, I don't want to go out to a four or five handicap. He's gone the other way. He's gone five under scratch. So that's quite amazing. Okay, guys, if, uh, if I can get the light right, I'll hit a few out towards those posts, and you can see what the plane of the swing looks like and how much inside we get with that internal rotation. Yeah, they were good shots, weren't they?